What's up, everybody? Juan from Invest to Live. And boy, I saw a headline today and I said, you know what? I got to get something out there to talk about this because there is so much FUD based on nothing in the markets that are scaring retail traders and investors from equities to Bitcoin and everywhere in between. As always, this isn't financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. So please do your own research. And this is my opinion. And if you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, we really appreciate it if you would. But let's not waste any time. Let's jump in right away. I got a notice for a new article this morning out of Yahoo Finance. Uh, let me actually share my screen here so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Bitcoin price's worst case scenario is a $14,000 bottom, according to a strategist. Um, you can see here, this was the extent of the article. There was a video. The video was as unconvincing as anything I've ever seen. Essentially, a random independent analyst who's not even necessarily in the crypto space, told the interviewer they think that 14,000 might be the bottom. Look, here's why I'm sharing this, okay? There is always going to be someone somewhere who is projecting something on the bell curve that's completely wild, okay? So I want you to think about this in terms of a bell curve, right? We start low, we go up high, and we go to the, to the outsides. In the world of options, we use this for forming standard deviations against the means, right? Where to place my trades, where to understand what's happening. In school, bell curves, right? This is how we make sure we try to push grades up and make things fair for everyone in the class. So let's just say everyone out there believes in average price for Bitcoin, I, I'm just throwing a random number out there. Let's just say the average price near term might be 50K. Well, it's not unreasonable to think there might be some people who are calling 100K or more. And there's also probably a lot of people who are saying maybe 14,000 is a bottom. The problem is this is like one person who was interviewed, who is an independent non-crypto analyst saying, yeah, I guess if you look at the math, in theory, assuming a worst case scenario, there could be a $14,000 bottom. And what happens is folks who do not have the time in the markets to understand and do their own assessment, see things like this and panic more. They, they start looking at their portfolio and they say, well, well, geez, you know, I bought in at all time highs or maybe I bought in at 50 or 40 or 38 and now I'm down. And I start thinking like, boy, I've saved up a lot of money. I've worked really hard to start investing. I don't want to lose even more or, or half of my money. So they all jump out. And then we see a couple of days later, the price of a Bitcoin or an equity or real estate or anything else for that matter starts to go up again. And then it's now jumping back in at yet another higher price and the panic comes out again. Here's the problem. There isn't a list here saying, well, this one independent, non-crypto focused analyst says 14,000 is the bottom. And then it says, but 10,000 other analysts are predicting, you know, like I said, in this, maybe 50,000 near term, right? And, you know, maybe 50, think 100, and 10, think a million and whatever, right? This is, this is the way news works in bear markets, right? If you're new to bear markets or downturns or negative, negative, um, uh, you know, earnings, right? <laughs> the bad stuff comes out of the woodwork. It is like a mission to find a news headline that's going to drive fear and views. We all know that everyone who creates content knows it's about getting views, but the reality is you have to balance it. Um, I was just a little bit disappointed, frankly, to see that this is sort of where we're at, where the only thing I'm seeing in the past hour out of here. Um, and I know of course, at the time of this video, it's been about two hours now almost, but Come on, I mean, a 14,000 bottom, like what is that meant to be other than just silliness and fun? So for that to happen, there would have to be so much movement on the blockchain. You'd have to see it moving uh, from nodes. You'd have to be able to, you, first of all, you could track all this, we would know it, where it's moving, what exchanges, who's buying it, who's selling it, what wallets are moving it the most. So when you see things like this, there are people who are out there who are specialists in this. I mean, I follow an account on Twitter that literally is a live API that tracks large movements of crypto, um, from you know, stable coins to Bitcoin to Ether to whatever it's tracking. So I just wanted to share this today because one of the big things I said yesterday, especially around the psychology and anxiety of being an investor and trading in negative markets, is there is a reason oftentimes if you have a long horizon of what you're investing for and when you're going to need the money, to put down the apps, stop logging into your account, take a step back and walk away from it. Now, who's really going to see this news and panic? anyone who's trading on margin or has margin in their account. Now, full stop, let's take a second. Trading cryptocurrency on margin is wildly risky. Um, I don't care how long you've been doing this. 
I've been doing this a long time. I've been in the markets for well over 20 years. And I, I, in my equities, I'm a, I am a margin trader. That is what I do. I've done it for a long time. I've paid the price in my very early years doing it the wrong way. If you don't understand how to properly hedge and protect your positions and understand that margin is for amplifying the wins, but you have to know how to get those losses out immediately. So just saying that first and foremost, but in crypto, my gosh, you talk about a wild asset class that can, can scream up and crash down in an instant. So just first and foremost, if you use the margin in crypto, I really urge you, please, like you got to stop doing that. Like, please, no more liquidations to crash the markets. That's the ask. So you see stuff like this come out and it starts to amplify the bad news and the FUD and the negative news. And I'll call this out. I don't, I wish I had a way to like call him out on this channel because he's doing a great job. But James over from Invest Answers does almost a, a daily, if not a daily update on what's happening in the crypto markets. He is very knowledgeable in the space. I don't know him personally, but I do watch his channel. Um, he puts out great, great stuff. I think that that's a great counterbalance to what he's seeing, the chain, um, what he has for news, the way they analyze pricing, et cetera. Um, so for every 14,000 floor article, there's, you know, a hundred people who are going to tell you why this doesn't make sense, but they're just not represented in these articles and these videos. So that's it. I want to share this real quick as people are getting panicky. They're not sure what to do. They're getting it from every angle. If your plan was to get into Bitcoin um, or any asset class, frankly, right? <laughs> because you liked it, you think there's growth and opportunity, then this should be seen as an, a discount and a reason to get more, right? If, however, you're a trader and your goal was to get in and get out, well, don't wait for it to get to 14. I mean, get out right away. This is the mentality of being successful in the space. Investors need to have conviction where they put their money with a long-term view. Traders need to have conviction on their entries, exits, and stop losses. If you're, if you're either an investor or trader and you don't approach it that way, the only person who's going to get hurt is you. It's not going to be me. I'm going to be waiting for these prices to go down so I can buy into things. So if you're the one who's giving those shares up cheap, thank you for giving them to me at a discount because I'm going to buy them. Uh, final point and unrelated to Bitcoin, but it's a great call out. I've been seeing a lot lately. Um, if you are a dividend investor and you're looking at your portfolio and you're getting scared because the values are going down, this, when you can buy the same stock you bought at 50 for 30, say, whatever the case is, you're getting a discount on that dividend yield if the expectation is that the dividend can maintain and that price will eventually rise back again. So keep that in mind. That it's a really simple way to increase your yield on cash that you're spending for those uh, equities. So just want to put that out there as a final point. I think a lot of folks are getting very nervous that like the really key blue chip dividend players, um, they're coming down with the rest of the market, but fundamentally there's no real reason why these names aren't going to eventually grow over time. And we're not going to continue to see dividends the way they are, especially like, REITs are getting um, <coughs> hammered a bit as well. To me, I'm, I'm a, you know, th that's a place where like, I have no concerns. I'm, I'm just looking for more. And with that note too, don't forget AT&T has earnings this week. And uh, there's some, some wonky expectations from the numbers, right? We're expecting revenue to go down, um, but earnings to be up a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, I went longer than I wanted to. I want to focus on the 14K Bitcoin. That being said, thanks so much for watching. Hope you're safe. Hope you're doing the right things. Hope you're taking a break from looking at stock prices every 10 seconds. So until next time, thanks so much for watching. Have a good day and good luck out there. Thanks, everybody.